Okay, so carrying on from the last video where we've got um, our actors and our props set up, it's now time to look at some of the ways we can refine the retargeting in Motion Builder. So let's start having a look at these controls then. So because we've got the characters, our two assassin characters being driven live by motion capture here, there's a number of controls that we can start looking at to kind of start getting that match even tighter. So if I look at our x-ray view now, we can see that the hands compared between the two skeletons. So let's, actually I'm going to hide the evil assassin and I'm going to hide Lindell's mocap. And let's have a look at just Andy. We can see there's a difference here, yeah? So an important aspect when we're doing one-to-one -one retargeting is a setting in the characters options that's not in this character controls. Like last um, video I showed you how we've got kind of two places where we can unlock definitions and, and tweak things. There's a certain amount that we can do here, but there's also some extra options and some really kind of deep dive options within the characterization settings in the navigator window. And as I said before, if you double click on the entry, then you'll get the options come up. If you single click, it doesn't change. If you double click, it makes the options active. So there's one important section down here, which is retargeting. Um, and another one I want to highlight you to is this option here called match source. Now, when you have characters of different sizes, Motion Builder spatially compensates for that. So it doesn't matter at the difference in leg length, it translates that across. The only difference being if you motion capture a normal height person to a small character, they'll walk forward in their small gait and move less distance. Match source basically says one to one. I want you to follow exact positions for hips and feet to follow around and move in the same spatial um, kind of distance. But it also affects spatial settings across the skeleton, which means that everything becomes much tighter and one-to-one. -one. So if, if we use this as an example here, if I roll in, so I want these hands to be absolutely locked together. Now I can do this up here in the character controls, and each of these is what we call an IK goal. Um, and we have a weight slider down at the bottom. So let's look at the left hand. And we can see here we've got IK blend T, IK blend R, which is translation and rotation. Now, if I up this to 100%, you'd think, well, why isn't it matched in absolutely to that hand position? It's because match source is still not activated. It's trying to spatially compensate for all of that and get as close as it can but it's not going absolute because match source is not ticked. So if I tick match source now, you see it jumped straight into position. So if I select this bone, look at the translation, and I select the hand, you'll see they're in exactly the same place. And if I relax off that, you'll see there. And then the rotation is the same. It will try and match the rotation of those two nodes, absolutely. If I turn match source off, there's a drift, turn match source on. So for this scene, we want match source to be on. We've, we've spent the time to match the characters up as closely as possible, and we want it one to one. So you'll need to turn on the match source option for both the um, two characters. Let's do the evil one, but even though we can't see him, let's just unhide that now and unhide Lindel mocap. And now we could start looking at hand positions. One of the things I like to tend to do is to just put it all on 100%. There'll be a bit of a difference now that I'm going to show you. So if you see Andy, he, we've managed to get similar arm proportions for Andy. Well, we haven't got them. He's got them already. They're very similar arm lengths. So if I put um, the option on Andy's right hand as well, 
100% translation, 100% rotation with match source selected. It's not introducing too much bend into the elbows. But if I do the same with Lindel for the evil assassin, so it's changed to assassin evil, and then look at this left hand here with these controls. Match that in. That's not too bad actually, I think, because we got that the scale, um, the scale more evenly matched. And again, this is an important thing for you to remember when you're doing your matching up and scaling of the skeletons, is to get that scale as close overall and those poses close overall as possible. Now, some of these settings it won't work very well for. You'll see there's lots of goals. There's an elbow lock and there's a there's a wrist lock. Now we, we don't put both of these on 100%. And again, I encourage you to experiment with these settings. It's very subtle for the elbow at this stage, but it can cause problems if you have too much bend. If you try and keep the elbow in and keep the hand in, then motion builder is gonna struggle to keep that tension in the rig. So what you're gonna have to trial between the way you've set your rigs up and how well they would target is finding the balance with these settings. I'd suggest going back and tweaking the setup, unlock the definition, do some adjustment, relock it and assess. Um, and then you might find that you have to go to 50% or somewhere along those lines. Yeah, um, I'm gonna leave the elbows off for the moment because I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna set the display to normal and let's have a look now going through we can see now with the evil ones that the elbow markers are are pretty much in place don't forget the volume of these assassin characters is different to um lindel and andy's volume especially like in the chest area with that plate we're not looking for absolutes on all of these marker placements they're here as as guides and they're giving us a good idea about how well our retargeting is going now I'm not looking in the unit for 100% accuracy. It's not possible. There's so many different stages where you've put your adjustments in. Just make sure you tell me about these adjustments and the considerations. So when I open the files and I see your results, I have the corresponding information in the report and I can see your thought process within your workflow and kind of go from there. But if you look now, it's not bad. It's not that far off as I was concerned. There's a lot of deformation in hands that we haven't done any hand pose. These are the typical kind of spade hands that you get with motion capture, but we're seeing very believable results at the moment. Things are matching up and they look okay. So let's just swap out that sword. If I just unhide um, the saber and I hide the sword, we can see how that looks so let's turn that to models only so we don't see that bone going up. Now, obviously, in the settings, nobody would grab hold of a, uh, an LED saber or a lightsaber because it would cut your hand off. But again, this is purely to see how different things work. Now, we can see the handle there is sticking out quite a way. We could move it up. But again, on one frame, everything might look right. And on other frames, it might not. So one of the things we've got here, can you see the saber is actually going through the shoulder pad? Now that was touching Andy's arm. If I go to um, the normal view, the sword was actually brushing along in the suit. If you look at the reference video, you'll see, and because of these shoulder pads, so what we'd have to do in full workflow would be adjust these collisions and intersections. Now the original plan for the unit was to include those in the assessment, but because of what's happened and not having the time to go through the lessons and the lectures, and I didn't want to introduce anything new given the time constraints that we've got, as per the handbook, we're leaving it at this. We're gonna get the retargets working, look at that overall workflow and leave it at this stage rather than trying to go in keyframe poses for hands and doing everything like that there just isn't the time left for us now so it's kind of where we're at at the moment so depending on how well you've adjusted um, and squared off the the mocap skeletons before retargeting and how you've set up and lined up and rescaled your characters and how well you've lined up 
the retarget for the props, etc., etc. There's a lot of considerations in there to adjust that will give you um, a range of results. So make sure you communicate that to me in the report. And again, I will get the scene in motion builder from you and I will be using a combination of the x-ray mode to have a look and see how well the skeletons have been lined up. I'll be looking for any glitches in the mocap data or any cleanup that hasn't worked in your scene. But we're kind of at the end of our workflow journey now with, with this module. Um, and you should get something similar to this. We can change between the fight sequences and have a look how that works across um, and go through. And again, if we go into uh, models only mode, we can see how these hand placements are working. And again, from certain angles, we can get some really nice kind of lineups for this at the moment. But in a lot of the extreme situations, it may or may not work. Find the settings that work as an average across. Tweak it, talk about it in the report, tell me what you did and why you did it, and that will all contribute to the mark. So for now, this concludes um, the mocap workflow. Um, this video will be going online shortly and um, good luck.